The People's Democratic Party has alleged that President Mohamedou Buhari's poor understanding of the current global economic dynamics and humongous corruption in his presidency have completely wrecked Nigeria. It said the limited the limits of economic knowledge of the president and the APC was also directly responsible for the accumulated two sorry 22 trillion naira national debt burden on the country. The party said that the president Buhari heeded wise counsel from it, the PDP, to allow allow competent hands to manage the nation's economy, and had he not continued to provide official cover for corruption in his presidency, the nation would not have been in this current embarrassing economic situation. Now, Chukudi, okay, the PDP have come out as politicking goes to say what they want to say, but I don't even think that should be our focus. Let's look at this 22 trillion naira debt that we are currently in. Let's analyze that. Now, facts are sacred. You know, I was going to come from the context, like you have said, the facts of the matter. Mm. And rather than say, oh, it's politicking season, mm -hmm. you know, PDP has launched, they you know, say, an attack. But waiting for APC's counter-attack. <laughs> I yeah. want to appeal to Nigerians that, please, whenever political parties, I don't want to say the major political parties, whenever political parties go to town mm. accusing each other, let us not take sides because we are sympathetic to this party or that party. Let's look at the crux of I the mean, matter. You can be a card-carrying member of a political party, but it is important to look at the crux of the matter. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the debt that, you know, the People's Democratic Party has alleged that the All Progressives Congress, led by uh, President Mohamed Bouhari, has led Nigeria into. That should be our focus. And it shouldn't be about uh, why we, the PDP, even talk, even though we should also look at it because government exists in continuum. Or APC, well, what has the APC done? The truth is, it is always very important, looking at the examples that these people have shown, where this person spends all, this person spends nursery, primary, secondary, and university uh, politics in a, in a political party and go for masters in another political party and come to tell us that you are now born again or you are now different from what it was in the past. Let us look at the facts of the matter. Now, this is really very appalling. There is nothing wrong in borrowing so that you can, even though it is really very, very unfortunate, looking at the country that is blessed with human and natural resources, it is most unfortunate because it's as a result of maladministration and mismanagement. But really and truly, if you want to invest in human capital development, there is really nothing wrong. So long as you have a concrete plan that would ensure that you consolidate on your investment and you are able to pay back and not throw posterity in debt. But, but the truth be. is, in Nigeria, mm. it is most unfortunate that these people are only concerned about themselves. And I insist, there are two classes of Nigerians. The political class that benefit from everything governance or government and the suffering masses of Nigeria. Okay, but Chukudi, I, this is where I have a bit of a problem because I believe that, yes... That's very accurate, but that's one side of the story. Now, you and I both studied international relations, and Nigeria and Africa's economic problem is bigger than poor leadership. Nigeria and Africa's economic problem goes all the way back to the foundations of the World Bank, the IMF, or should we start with structural adjustment programs that only ended up having, or sorry, had rather a 76% failure rate admitted by the World Bank in 1994? Can we even say that we are economically independent See, the truth to begin is, with? The truth is, Britain Wood institutions will take advantage of you. I mean, when they come with policies, it is essentially to favor their interest. But you should be wise to know what is best for your people. But surely we should also have a system where we are building up on the Africa Development Bank so that we do not have to continue to turn to the West even because your Africa, we are even, currently trapped. Even your African Development Bank is funded by these people. Yes, but this is my issue, Chukudi. This is the cycle that we are, founding our, we are finding ourselves trapped in, okay? In order for the economy to grow, we need certain funds to be able to get our people off their feet. However, at the same time, we are being extorted. Let's, let's be fair. In international politics, I mean, we studied international relations. Mm. No permanent enmity, no permanent friendship is essentially permanent interest. Why are our refineries not functional? Is it their fault? It's at the interest of people that are not even from this continent or country. But who benefits from them? Not us. The West. Not the West. Your politicians benefit from them. Okay, fair point as well. Your fair leaders point, benefit from them. Fair point as well. But this is... The, would you not say that this is the reason why our borders are so open today? Because, Shukudi, look at the situation. Africa's economy has been targeted to malfunction 
on wrong structural, adu um, structural adjustment programs since back in the 1970s. You, we you place yourself in a difficult situation and the person wants to exploit you. Now, our relationship with the West or the powers that be is asymmetrical in the sense that we are entirely dependent on what we would get. I mean, it is not a partnership. The partnership should be what you're bringing to the table. But it all started with a misdiagnosed problem. We never needed structural they adjustment took programs because it's all gone down they since took then. See, have you forgotten that mm. in Nigeria, our, lecture our lecturers told us in university, we lived in a country where they did their laundry. We live in a country where they ate full chicken and had a serving of ice cream. How did it all go wrong? Who destroyed the educational sector in Nigeria? There are Nigerians That's that are doing... That's where poor leadership now comes into it. That is, the, that is the biggest problem. Let's look at, you know, Thomas... Let, let, let's look at Burkina Faso mm. under Thomas Sankara. Do you know that a lot of the people in Burkina Faso today mm. that are alive and well owe their thanks to Thomas Sankara because of the health, the grassroots healthcare uh, policies that he yeah. initiated. If we have leaders that are passionate about the people, it is really going to be difficult. Why? Because they want to exploit you. Now, if we are friends or if we are family and somebody from the outside wants to take advantage of us, what will the person take advantage of if there is a crack within our ranks? We live in a country where people benefit. These politicians have property abroad. They steal our money, the ones that have been proven, and take it to Switzerland. How much has Switzerland returned to Which Nigeria? Which is why we're, we're now looking at a $350 million loot from the Abacha regime that's now being distributed as 55K to the poorest So families. the truth so is, they would that. want to take advantage of you. They would want to exploit you. But you must have a leadership that is determined and hell-bent on development and progress. Absolutely. If we have people who are not even fit to be course reps, presiding over administrative affairs, mm. is it the British Wood institutions that say that I of I should not pay salary? Samuel Otom is owing salary. I can go on and on with the governors yeah. that are owing salaries. These people, President Mohamed, when President Mohamed Buhari came into, into power, there were special grants given to these our governors so that they could pay salaries. Are people not still owing salaries till date? Do we blame it on IMF and World Bank? They will take advantage of you because it is essentially about interest. Mm -hmm. But you must have leaders that are determined. And this leaders is what my point is. This is what my point is. Because what I'm essentially trying to say is that the reason at the start of the conversation I said, let's even ignore the fact that the PDP have come to outcry on this. Let's look at the problem in itself. Where exactly does Nigeria's economic problem today stem from? That's not to say that poor leadership has literally not worsened. Our it. economic mm -hmm. problems stem from the failure of leadership. It's simple. Mm -hmm. The person that wants to exploit you from the outside will do everything to undermine your step to development and progress. But you must be resolute and dogged. There are companies that are folded up in Nigeria and have moved to Ghana or moved to other countries. Why? Because the policies are not just favorable. Yeah. When you make laws under pressure, mm. you put your investors under a lot of strain. But what you must do is have a path that will chart some sort of development mm. in your country. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen over 20, 30 years. Yeah. But so long as you're resolute, there will be, there will be development. Absolutely. If you look at Nigeria today, mm. We are not, we are, our, our, the sacrifice on our part mm. is not commensurate to those in leadership. They are feeding fat. I still pay vigilante and I hear bang, 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 12 o'clock when I'm sleeping. Meanwhile, some people are going around with sirens. Wow, 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 wow. Let's, let's think about this. It's the, outsider wants to, the outsider wants to exploit you. Mm. No doubt. I accept. Britain Wood institutions will try to exploit you. But if you have leaders who are resolute and determined, it's what you bring to the table. If the person tries to exploit you, you say, okay. And you fashion a way that will beat the person at their own game. I believe that this is a conversation that we have to continue. So what I'm going to do is next week on Hello Nigeria, an economic analyst will certainly join Chukudi and I and Olive in the studio so that we can speak about this further. Nigeria has its political problem. Nigeria has its social problem. Nigeria also has its economic problem. So we want to be able to look at all three arms so that we can have a full understanding of exactly what Nigeria's problem is today. And then we can start looking towards the solution. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.